Hey, hey everybody, welcome to the gate stream. Woo! Hola. That's Buenos tardes. Buenos tardes. Good afternoon. Yeah. And welcome. Bienvenido. Bienvenido. Would it be <laughs> Kelly Mira? <laughs> oh, Kelly Mira. Oh, good job, that's buddy. Good morning. Yeah, good that's job. Greek. It's not Kelly Nita yet. He's, uh, he's speaking one? Greek now. We went from Spanish to Greek. Um, yeah, we're glad to have you guys with us, and uh, we are looking forward to studying the book of John with you guys today. You want to grab your Bibles because we want you to be in this study. It is a group study. In other words, we want your voice to be a part of this. We really do want to hear from you. Uh, you will hear me say this. You've heard it a hundred times. You'll hear it a hundred more. Ooh. We have the mind of Christ. <clears throat> That's right. I, I, I bet I'm not exaggerating to say that you've heard me say that a hundred times. It's In so the cool. last five years, we have the mind of Christ. Um, and that's because we're doing this together. We're, we're gathering around God's word together. And everybody, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is gonna emphasize different things to different ones of us. So I wanna encourage you to grab your Bible and we're in John chapter three. Uh, we're in John chapter three, what is it? Verse 22, 22 all the way the to the end. end of the chapter. So we're taking, we were just talking about this before we came on live. We're going to take some big bites of John mm -hmm. and it leaves a lot of room for different people to kind of say, here's what Holy Spirit's really emphasizing out of this passage for me mm -hmm. and bring what you have so that we can all be edified. And so I'm going to, I'm going to read the passage. I'll pray. Then we'll read the passage. And I think it's who went first last time. Jamie, probably. He, I think he Jamie did, here, and then and you, then and then me. Wow. So this time you get to go. All and right. then Ryan, and then you. You always get to go before me. Take all the good so, stuff. So, yeah. Please, get it all. Eat all the meat, and I'll just frost some cake or something like that. Frost It's a different metaphor. Yeah, we can frost, frost the, the meat, meat around here. Yeah, okay. let's frost. I'll frost the meat <laughs> when we're done. Dakota. We can do whatever we want, right? Ah, I get it now. It's chill, like it's from a deep freeze. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We're going to frost the meat. All meat right. preserves the yeah. substance. Pre preserves the nutrients. Nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Lord, thank you for John. Thank you for his witness. Thank you for he's our brother. He's in the cloud of witnesses right now. Mm. And uh, what an honor that you you uh, blessed him and, and breathed through him this book for us. Yeah to experience you and to encounter you, Jesus. As we often pray, uh, may our hearts burn within us. Like um, on Emmaus Road, the, the uh, disciples that heard you opening the scripture and showing them yourself. Reveal Jesus to us, Holy Spirit, in the scriptures today. In your name, amen. 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 All right, I mean. I'm gonna read uh, in KJV today, actually, yeah, I read a bunch. You guys probably did two different translations, but I thought just for reading purposes, I'm going to read New King James Version today, uh, 22 through the end of chapter three. After these things, Jesus and his disciples. After what things? Well, the we just read it last week. The uh, Nicodemus. Yeah. Right? So we don't know how long it is, but we know he's still in the Jerusalem Judea area. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing, and Anon, however you like to say that word, probably there's a better way to say that than that, near okay. Salim, Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing mm. and all are coming to him. And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Mm. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Mm. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. Mm. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. Mm -hmm. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who received his testimony 
has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son yeah. and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Hmm. All right. Come on. Yeah. Batter up. Batter up. Well, I love this passage um, because it's kind of like uh, John. It's not even kind of like. It's John um, finally seeing or them seeing what John has been saying this whole time. Mm. Um, they even point to him and say, the guy that you said is a Messiah is doing... Messiah things, but they didn't recognize it as Messiah things. Mm -hmm. They recognize it as John's thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, John, this guy, he's doing your thing. And John's like, well, it's not my thing yeah. because it was given to me in the first place from heaven. And mm -hmm. it's also from heaven from this guy. Um, I, mm -hmm. In some of my notes, it was, uh, John, we know what you said, but look, he does the thing against our structure, you know, um, <laughs> because that's all they knew they knew the law and they knew the structure that they went through but i find mm -hmm. it curious and also very similar to today um that they didn't recognize who the law writer was they didn't recognize the originator where it came from mm -hmm. they just recognized that he was against the system they made yeah. um but it was it was not against a structure jesus wasn't doing it to push against he was doing it for the father's mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. um let's see i told you um uh, I'm just paraphrasing in my little notes here. Um, verse 27 is, I told you who he was. Now see what he does, not as a ritual to God. Because that's all they were used to was rituals to God. Mm -hmm. Said, uh, not as a ritual to God, but as a gift from God. Um, and I believe that's why he says that. A man can receive only what is given to him from heaven. Um, it's, it's a gift too. Um, and I think that could have been pretty revolutionary back then. I guess everything in these passages is revolutionary. But That's what a true. thought to be like, um, this ritual is not for God. It's God for humans. It completely flipped mm. everything just in that one statement. Like, mm. no, this is also a gift from heaven. What we're doing to people or what I've been doing to people is a gift from heaven. But this is the one who it's from. And he's hmm. actually doing it for people yeah. uh, instead of the other way around, which is a ritual to God. It's God doing it to us. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, awesome, bro. Yeah, it is for the bridegroom. Um, I love how he immediately launches into talking about the groom and bridegroom because uh, it's a love paradigm. It's like, no, this is to purify her. This is not... Uh, mm -hmm. This is not her purifying herself. This is the bridegroom purifying the bride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so much more intimate than just one person. It speaks of a union, a bridegroom and a groom, or a bridegroom and a bride. It speaks of a union together, purifying, uh, purifying mm -hmm. for the ceremony um, that is taking place. Um, in verse 29, I have uh, the note that he, uh, he stands. Uh, let me get to that over here. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom uh, uh, waits and listens for him. Um, the translation I looked up online said stands, actually, instead of waits. Because mm. um, mm. this is a different Bible than what I looked up for. Uh, but I, I found it interesting uh, that he stood for him. Like, oh, gosh, here he comes. He, oh, and he's standing out of excitement. Uh -huh. Kind of like a... Almost like a flagpole, you know, rises out of the horizon. Yeah. You can see that flag. Yeah. It's like him standing. And then mm -hmm. he immediately says, but I must decrease because yeah. I've been doing something as a preparing, but preparing for what is actually here now. Right. So now I'm going to sit. And I, and I know it says wait in this, in this translation, but I, I love that when he's that in uh, the other translation uh, that I looked up uh, on Bible Gateway, it's, it talked about him standing. And that was such a cool picture to me. Um, that he, he, it was, it's like standing for a general or even standing mm. for the bride at a wedding. Like uh -huh. it's an announcement you stand for you're, you're, or like uh, Congress all stands when the president walks mm -hmm. in to give a speech, everyone stands. So I saw, mm -hmm. I liked that translation of John the Baptist standing for it. And then he sat down to receive the real reason, yeah. the real lesson, the, mm -hmm. the, I must decrease. So he must increase. I know it's deeper than that. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys will get into that part, but I, I loved, I love that he gave reference with his whole life. And then the final one, he's, 
he's standing above a crowd in that translation, mm -hmm. and then he he's here and he he sits he decreases. Um, mm. He's uh, for thirty. Who, he who comes from above is above all. Um, he's not just a messenger. He's saying this man mm. over here across the way is not just a messenger. He's he's God. He is above all and. You might see it as uh, him breaking a ritual, but he's fulfilling mm -hmm. what I've been saying, mm -hmm. what God mandated mm -hmm. me to say. He's fulfilling that right now. That's him over there. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, and I also put for verse 33, uh, the man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. Cool. It's really deep because belief isn't just about trusting knowledge. And I think that a lot of mm -hmm. religious systems is about trusting knowledge. Yeah. And even mm -hmm. even you know the hidden knowledge that was that tempted Adam and Eve. Like, oh, there's yeah. some hidden mm -hmm. knowledge. Oh, yeah. You should get some of this stuff. Yeah. You'll yeah. be. It's the same thing where it's this belief structure. Um, it's pointing. He's pointing to. It's not about that trust in knowledge. It's about trusting God. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why belief sets us free because we're not trusting in what we believe is true. We're trusting that God is truthful mm -hmm. and if you can't mm -hmm. if you can't trust that he's truthful you can't trust anything else um, and uh, because it's less about believing that he's real and more about believing that he's a promise keeper and I think I think mm -hmm. that's a way better framing because he is no matter what we are he is yeah. Yeah. so it's not yeah. believing he's real it's believing he's not a liar <laughs> it's yeah. and I shouldn't even phrase it like that because there's no reason to describe God with a with a negative or a double negative or whatever um, it's that he's a truth teller that he is that is very character so you're trusting the character it's knowing God that's why he's saying yeah. uh, that you will inherit the kingdom of heaven because you know what it is you're not just believing in some knowledge you have you're knowing who you're trusting Ooh, um, come on. yeah how could you know the character if you don't think he is <clears throat> truthful that's that's what I wrote in here. You you can't know God. You can't be with God if mm -hmm. you don't even believe He's truthful and a promise yeah. keeper. You don't even know His character. So how could you be with Him for eternal eternity? Uh, because yeah, there's no yeah. trust built. There's no because mm -hmm. belief is a trust, and there's no trust yeah. built. And God is relational. So you have, you must be relational and first know His character, which is promise keeper, uh, mm. among many other things. But in this mm. case, He's doing what He said. Um, Come on. Yeah, man. yeah. I, I just wrote in the back, uh, and I, I already covered it, but I, I really, I think it was a big point that they were trying to get John to say something else when they're like, "But he's doing your thing. He's you do that. That's you." And he's like, "No, I do him, and there he is. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I've been doing yep. him, and he's here now. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's beautiful. It's a, it's always shaking up this whole." whole book of John he's just shaking stuff up uh, and it's just beautiful because he knew and he chose yes. he chose a life of decreasing as soon as he saw uh, the truth and I think that's mm -hmm. what we have to do constantly um, not get into what our ministries are and how big their impacts are and all, and all that's good on the sub level but when it compares to the truth the actual person of Jesus, we definitely must decrease. And I think this is such a great example of that. I mean, he had the best ministry at the time. Like mm -hmm. the best, the hottest, the coolest, the most impactful, the most mm -hmm. streamlined message, the most everything. And he's like, nope, it doesn't matter because it was only in preparation yeah. of mm -hmm. the actuality. Yeah. It was only a yeah. shadow of the actuality. It was only a foretelling. Now God is actually here. Come so, on. Yeah. That's, that's so that's good. Come game. on, Chris. That's so good, man. Yeah. I was kind of thinking about that too. How John says that the friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom, bridegroom's voice. The joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. I think it's amazing that like God gave John a task from like I think at the beginning of John when we started this Bible study it like mm -hmm. talked about how he went and prepared the way for the Lord so like yeah, he had this yeah. specific task that he was doing and sometimes God gives us specific tasks and there's a starting point and a finishing point mm -hmm. um, but I don't know about you guys but sometimes I feel like and in this kind of hitting on what you're saying like we feel called to this thing and we expect it to like satisfy yeah, we expect mm -hmm. it to like 
just bring joy all the time. Yeah. And like, oh, I'm doing this great thing for God. It's yeah. so awesome, so amazing. And then you get into it and you find out that there's service involved and there's yeah. sweat involved and there's heartache involved. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is not exactly what I signed <laughs> up for. Uh -huh. But like, but yet I'm doing it, yet God's called me to it. But I, I just love that John, he's not even at the end of what, I mean, he's at the end of one phase of what God's uh -huh. called him to. And I just love that wholeheartedly he can say like, Oh man, I, I've shown you, I brought you to the bridegroom and now this joy is mine. He's, yeah. he's satisfied. He's like, yes, we did it. Like I, I can be satisfied. And mm -hmm. I, I just believe that the Lord is giving, can give that to us as a gift as we pursue him. Mm -hmm. That it's not so much about how we build or what we build or what we do yeah. or how many yeah. people we influence. It is about just like, knowing this bridegroom like yeah. we there's so much satisfaction in mm -hmm. in knowing him like yeah, that's right it, it and then it goes on to say that he he who is from above is above all like yeah. just think about that like god is above all we and we have complete access to him at all times like no wonder we john is so satisfied like he realizes <laughs> yeah. like this is god himself like I was dunking people in water in the hot sun and like that was awesome but now God himself is right here in front of me yeah, yeah. like this joy mm. man this joy and and like that that excites me because we have that that same access like yeah we don't, we're not seeing Jesus face to face all the time although I've heard of some people like they've mm. seen Jesus in dreams and stuff but man we got Holy Spirit living inside of us we're seated with God in heavenly places mm -hmm. like our life can be living satisfaction and it doesn't mm, matter mm, if it doesn't mm, look mm. like what we expected or what people think it should look like our ministry should look like our family should look like our work should look like like there's satisfaction in just going and he's above all yeah, yeah. he is god and he is above yeah. all come on and i am his and it's interesting in this yes. in this in this passage in this chunk that we've taken off too it, it like points to three like real like instrumental things or relational things like you were saying chris like we're the bride we're his friends and we're his children like it mentions all three of these like very intimate relationships and we get all three of those very <laughs> intimate go. relationships with the lord yeah, yeah like that's good it's just i don't know it's it's like you know, you just find that we're, we're kind of like looking at bird's eye view. You kind of mentioned yep. that before yep. we started. And bird's eye view is this is pointing out that we're friends, we're children, mm -hmm. and we're the bride of Christ. Like a, a little bit. At least it's hitting on it a little bit. It's yeah. like, oh, man, that's so good. And I, I think it was – I might end with this, maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Come on. You sound like a real preacher now. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. might end with this. I might end with it. But it talks about like he must increase and I must decrease. And it's kind of along the lines of what we've been saying here. But I just love the heart of John and the yeah. heart that God gives us. Like mm -hmm. he's not he's not saying like this is one. I think this is one thing that you can get tripped up on this verse. Like. There's times that God has called you to do great things. This is where I'm going to go. Yeah, let's go. He's All called right. you to do great things. He's called you to stand out and to be in front of the masses, whether that's like us on, on Facebook and YouTube right now, or maybe he's just called you and you are going to have this influence on people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can take this verse and we can take false humility right. and we could go, uh, uh, it's got to be for somebody else. It's got to be for somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I got to ask you, if Jesus would have taken on that mindset, oh. it's for somebody else. Like yeah. all these healings, like... God, I, I want to honor you, and I want to give you honor. And, and when this paralyzed guy gets up, they're going to want to make me king. Like, I, maybe I shouldn't do it. You know, like, some of you mm -hmm. have such giftings. Yeah, like, come on. you know, you know if you write a you book. Know. You know if you play an instrument. <laughs> yeah. You know you, if you get up and speak, you know it does something to people. You know mm -hmm. it changes. So and that is God in you. Yeah. He's giving you that gift. Yeah. And if you try to hide that light under a basket, like in, in, in the name of humility, in the name of he must increase and I must decrease, 
the world is missing out on the blessing that you can give, that you can yeah. bestow. Now, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying go and be prideful, like go and, go and look for like your next platform. But there is a gift. There's a, like a God-given talent. And like if some of you lead, some of you are called to lead and you're going, yeah, but I don't want to, I don't want to be like mm -hmm. senior or I don't want to uh -huh. be, you know, I don't yeah. want that title. Uh -huh. Right. Like, yeah. but God, he, he has a really, and we've heard this before, but he's really good at making us humble or, or at humbling us. Yeah. Like, you know, he, here it is, John, like he's doing all these great things. And then he sees Jesus like, oh, that's, well, this is what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That gift is great, but oh, I get to be his friend. Like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. So, be bold. Stand out. Yeah, like, yeah. push through that false humility because it comes at us. I, I think, yeah. especially in well, maybe not just especially in the Midwest, but I know in the Midwest, we've been taught not to shine. We've been taught like, yeah, you know, like give somebody else the glory and like. But you know what? God's called you two to do some yeah, amazing right. things. And it's you. Right. It's you. It's him and you. Mm -hmm. And he that's wants right. your name on it. And he knows a good way, of, your name and his name on it. Mm -hmm. And he's good at keeping mm -hmm. us humble. So, mm -hmm. right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Your <laughs> yeah. name and his handwriting. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on. This, we can make humility a false god. We can. Mm -hmm. We can. Oh, I'm just, just going to stay mm -hmm. here. I'm going to be lowly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe God's calling you to a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Like, why not? It's like, yes, time. yes, yes. Like, mm -hmm. money is the root of almost every evil. But what if he's Come giving on. you ideas to, like, save nations? And with yeah. that billions of dollars, you are going to... That nation is going to rise up. Like, yeah. God picks people to do things right. like that. Sure he does. he he does it sovereignly, but he loves to use right. us too. <laughs> like, where's the yeah. book of Exodus without Moses? Like, with, right. God loves to grab people and do the God stuff through them. And like, yeah. we get these great people yeah. and God gets great honor. And so who knows, yeah. you know? So don't just think you're going to live this pious life and get 25 bucks a day and, you know, like have your heat set at 63, <laughs> you know, and you <laughs> never get to use your AC. Like, come on. Like God, mm -hmm. God may be calling you to so much more. So yeah, I'm just challenge you that. Amen. Challenge That's you good. with that. He, he's maybe calling you to so much more. Yeah. So. Amen. Yeah. I said, sometimes you can say, you've heard it said probably God doesn't care if you have money he doesn't want money to have you yeah oh, that's great. money isn't the root of all evil it's the love well, of money yeah that's yeah. right there so we, we go worship money yeah. that's the root of all kinds of evil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i'm with you ryan i'm glad you come on push that like yeah. push yeah. that let that and whatever it is i agree that's yeah. a powerful word and i want to be what? careful with it you know like i you know you want to yeah. be careful but still god I, I think all you want to do is just be obedient. Yeah, that's yeah, all you got to yeah. do is be obedient. Like, like you just preached it right on, Ryan. Yeah. Do what he's called you to do with your head held high, and that is humble. Yeah. I humble myself to actually believe that what he said is yeah. true. Yeah. I yeah. humble myself to that. So I'll probably be, knock this around a little bit more in my section, but let's first check to see what, yeah. what else we got online. Well, this this amazing lady named Tana Parker. Yeah. Ooh, she wrote this creepy thing. I'm oh. watching you. Oh. Is what she put. <laughs> I'm watching you. Hello? I'm watching you. Hello? Oh, Anybody man. else write anything? Um, and I think that's it. I'm going between okay. YouTube and Facebook. And okay. We're being yeah. watched. Being well, if you watched. have anything, please bring it. We'll still make room for it. Tana, you got some. Come on. You mm -hmm. got some good stuff in you to share. That's right. Um, we want to hear whatever anybody out there that's with us. It's it's our um, studying together that makes this so special. So I'll just jump on with you on that, Ryan. I was thinking of going there anyways. I won't spend too cool. much time because you did a fantastic job of it. Um, but uh, and there's been a lot recently. Like when I was growing up, this was a big verse that was used for that. Like. Mm. Less of me and more of you. Mm. In fact, we even quoted it in the wrong order. We were decreasing us to increase him. Oh. So first of all, if you flip it, it's about thinking about him first 
And, uh, you know, if you were going to take that interpretation of it, yeah. at least you start with him and increasing him instead of, if I make little of myself, somehow that will make much of him. Mm. And that's not, that doesn't work like that. You make little of you doesn't make much of him. Just make much of him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Come you, on. Those two don't, you don't have to make little of you to make much of him. You make much of him and focus on him. But really... Um, and I think there's been a lot written on this. Bill Johnson's one of the guys that I first read his book, Dreaming with God. And he oh. said, he talked about how the way he, he says it is, you know, it's gotta be all God and no me. I mean, that's the stuff I grew up with. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be all God and, and none of me. He said, God had none of you and he didn't like it. Ah. So he, uh, he formed you. Right, hit that rewind he, button. He, exactly, isn't that a great? That's that's the thing that Bill does so well. He's always got these mic drop things that he says. That's great. Like he actually wanted you. Like yeah. he formed you for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I won't spend a bunch of time on it, but I agree with Ryan on that. Um, there's something. There's something. Um, let me take it back away from this text too, because there's something big going on here that John's doing. Uh, he's writing to a people who are struggling. As they're becoming believers, mm. they're coming out of specifically Jews, are in this situation where how am I supposed to be a believer? Where does the law fit in all of this? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a wrestling match going on because if I embrace Jesus, I could potentially be kicked out of the synagogue. It was a real. Yeah. And to be kicked out of the synagogue wasn't like getting kicked out of a church in town. It's like your whole social structure of life, your family, everybody wow. disowns you. When you're kicked out of, the, out of the synagogue, your entire social structure of support is gone. Mm. Wow. You don't have anyone. <laughs> so you, you start, you're in trouble. You got no one in, you know, the whole, your little town, wherever you're a part of, you, you get kicked out of the synagogue for believing in Jesus, then you're, you, you know, you're done. You don't yeah. have anyone to, to turn to. And the, the church, and this whole book of Hebrews is about dealing with this, trying to help them see you've come to a better covenant. Yeah. Amen. And John's got this thing going on. It's, it's where he's talking, where we're talking about John the Baptist. One thing I learned is that uh, the ceremonial washing part, that was a normal part of, of the Jewish faith. They had ceremonial washing for not only people, but pots. And it was a part of the law, right? Uh, you clean yeah, stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. And, but there was not being baptized. The only people who were baptized were Gentiles baptized into, in this sense, Gentiles converting to Judaism. Hmm. Hmm. That kind of full immersion uh, conversion baptism, not just ceremony, ceremonial washing. That was done all the time. But this baptism thing that John was doing caused a lot of problems because why are, why are you telling us this? That's yeah. for Gentiles. They need to be baptized into the law. Hmm. They need to come wow. under the yoke of the law, which is literally what they would say to a Gentile. That, And again, even still, coming under the yoke of law as a Gentile, you're never really fully, fully uh -huh. in. Uh -huh. no, but man. you submit to Israel's God, and you can come to the court of the Gentiles. And, uh, you know, there's that kind of thing going on. But they're, they're, so they, they're like, why are you doing that, first of all? And now here comes Jesus and his disciples are, are baptizing now, too. And so, they, you know, they're talking to John. The, the Jews are talking to John. They're like, what are you doing? We got this ceremony. Why are you baptizing Jews? And so it's this the, theological hmm. thing going on, struggle. And so you've got John, though. He starts baptizing it's not only that John represents, you know, the transition to Jesus. It's also there's one order of things, and now there's a new order of things coming in, and they're running simultaneously. And John was called by God to do what he did for the season he did it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard when God says, "Okay, I did say that, and I did call that." And in this instance, John's got a bigger picture. He's talking about you need to know that. And the writer of Hebrews really spells this out, that the law is obsolete. That's exactly what Hebrews says. Mm. The law is now obsolete and it will soon disappear. Mm. That is like a direct quote from the book of Hebrews. Mm. It is obsolete and it will soon disappear. But what was happening during the, this time is you've got two things running simultaneously. Mm -hmm. John's written, Jesus has already gone to the cross, risen again, when he writes this, of course, years later. 
but you've also got the, the track of the law running at the same time parallel. And John's saying, look, just like John the Baptist, I'm talking John the apostle, is saying just like John the Baptist had to, to decrease in importance and ultimately mm-hmm. his, his role ended, what you're holding on to so tightly to, yes, God did say those. God did, you know, the law came from him, right? Mm-hmm. And Jesus didn't destroy the law. He fulfilled it, but that's no longer his operating system. And so now uh, the, what he's doing is called the new covenant. What he's doing is called a person named Jesus. Yeah, come on. And so there's a bigger thing come John's on. doing in the story. And he's going to do it all the way through the book of John. This, he's going to pit the, the old against the new. And, and the, the Pharisees are going to wrestle with it. They're going to... And, 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 we, if, if I were to make it like now, because we're like, well, yes, we still struggle with law and grace. But also sometimes I think if we made it like even if we dialed it down to sometimes we struggle with God told me to do this. So I'm going to keep doing it till Jesus comes yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if God says that is what I told you to do for that time? Yeah. But now I'm calling you to this. Uh-huh. But God, what about that? He's like, yeah, I did say that, but that's going to have to decrease now, yeah. Because this, there's going to be increase on this other thing that I'm doing. Yep. Come and on. are you willing to say goodbye? Um, sometimes one of the best things get, that can happen for a church is a burial. Mm-hmm. God called the church. He started that church. That church had an impact, but there came a point where that church then is it, it, the time is finished. That local church is done. Mm-hmm. And sometimes a, a healthy, good, grieving burial is a good thing to happen. It doesn't invalidate what God did through the previous thing. Yeah. It's to say, okay, now latch on to and run with me. So, or you could use it with moves of God. You know, yeah. uh, you know, this is a particular vein of flow of what God's always be doing it like this. Well, he did, he, he did, you know, move in that way, but now he is emphasizing something at his present truth. And you need to let go of something in order to move into what I'm calling you to move into. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to look yeah. at it, but yeah. that's kind of a big picture way of seeing. Sometimes I need to not hold so tightly to the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, make it about a, good. a thing. Yeah, the way revival used to look, it has to look like that now, mm-hmm. because he did it this way. Well, what if they all look like Toronto? They would all be laughing revivals, <laughs> right? There was nothing not right about that. It was beautiful. What God did in Toronto, God did in Toronto. And that doesn't mean some of those manifestations cannot still happen. They can, but we don't need to look for Toronto. We don't need to look for uh, the third great awakening to look like the second great awakening. We don't, yeah. we're not mm-hmm. looking to, to prop up John's ministry yeah. when it's time for John's <clears throat> ministry to give way to what God is doing now is what, I guess what I'm saying to all of us. The, the, you've probably heard this statement before, guys. The, the, the previous move of God will be the biggest critic of what God's currently doing. Uh, wow. yeah. So people that, that were in the previous thing, way that God was moving, will be the ones who strongly are the strongest opponents Dang. to yeah. what God is doing today. I've seen it because I've yeah. been in charismatic Pentecostal circles my whole life um, until one time the Lord put me in a Methodist church. And you know what I found out? The Methodist people were more hungry than the Pentecostals and Charismatics I was running with. Wow. Because the Charismatics and Pentecostals been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. We know all about Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, we got that. We know it. We could tell those other people mm. what it's about. Mm. Mm. And yet I go to this Methodist church where I work for two years and loads of people get baptized in the Holy Spirit in our basement at our house. That's so cool. A move of God that's phenomenal that actually helps birth our church. We... A four-square church got birthed out of a Methodist church. Come on. And people then from there came and helped us plant it. And, Dang. Um, but sometimes it's the, you know, the Charismatics and Pentecostals that will downplay even the move of the Spirit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because, you know, you got to be careful about all that. And we've seen that. He did that in the past. But, you know, I, I don't want God, to get hung yes. up on the last thing or the one. Yeah. What I don't want to be hung up on anything. Yeah. yeah. I want to be what you already talked about, you guys, is to be just totally... Totally consumed with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and then whatever thing needs to decrease can decrease, and whatever God's on, I want to be riding with Him. I, I want to be current. Yes. Yeah. Peter talks about present truth. 
And that's an interesting phrase. I think it's in First Peter, present truth. That doesn't mean there's truth that's, you know, that's more true, I guess. Maybe that's the way to say that. But it means there is truth that's presently emphasized. Yeah. What truth is God presently emphasizing? What is he presently doing? Um, we can either get hung up in the past or we can future trip about what might be coming or we can be on board with him now. And then the other thing, and i got to be done. That's a good. Ocean, future trip. Yeah. yeah. That happens. I had too much. Yeah. Exactly. Come on. Both one or the other. Just like a waves. And then the other thing is that whole phrase about receiving what you receive from heaven is um, we can only manifest what we receive from heaven. It's interesting. It's not manufacture. We receive. We don't manufacture. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I don't want to manufacture something. I actually no. just want to receive from heaven. Mm-hmm. And John's, John's point was, I received this ministry. I know what it was and what it is and what it's about to be. It's about to be a was. Mm-hmm. It's amazing mm-hmm. to me that John could embrace that. Yeah. That he could send people like, what a heart. Yeah. That he could send people and say, what I'm called to do is, you know, I'm kind of phasing it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm closing it down, guys. Yeah. Uh, you, you should run with him. Yeah. I mean, he sent his disciples that way. You should run with them. I'm phasing this thing out Ooh. because I've, I've done what I received from heaven to do. Now I want to get on board with what he's doing and I want to run with that. What if we were had more leaders like that? What if I was more of a leader like that, I should say? Yeah. What if I was more of a leader like that? It was like, man, okay, I feel like, the, I, yeah, my job now is to get underneath this thing, person, whatever, this person, and just back them 100% and send all the people Man. That I know into that, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? To be, yeah. to be those kind of leaders that are just able to let go, yes. hold so loosely, and say, "Okay, I did what I received from heaven to do." Now yeah. I see that that person there, she's doing it, and so I'm going to get on board with her, and I'm going to support what she's doing. So, mm. not out of self doubt, but out of no out of yeah. fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. Out of fulfillment. Yeah. And there is a part of me that too is- in this phase of my life that is looking for ways to see people as an older a guy that's not old but that that's is enough. in a different phase than i was when i planted a church at 29 um like okay how can i look at people around me that i can say what are you doing in them that i can get on board with mm-hmm. that i you know I'm, I'm, my leadership. mind is not so much on uh, building some big ministry for me as much as how can i build big people and see what you're doing in them like yeah. mm-hmm. how do we pass this how do we pass this on yeah um i don't know I'm it's talking, kind of, I don't have any notes, so yeah, no, I'm just I like roll, it. I'm just, roll, 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 ask Tana what I do. Roll, 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 roll. I just start talking. Tana, what know. does he do? Does he <laughs> roll, 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 <laughs> Yeah, roll, she'll roll, say yes, he does. It sounded great. I didn't sound like that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do that all the time with this study. I don't more think of this as preaching as I just start thinking, like just talking the text through. Like, yeah. oh, here's the stuff that stood out to me and just spoke to me. So, mm. I, uh, if anybody's also visual, just adding the increase, decrease, adding to it, mm-hmm. it's kind of like um, when you're watching a movie or a TV show or anything, and there's two people standing like this, and it just it focuses on this person, but this one's blurry, and then all of a sudden it focuses oh, yeah. on this one, and this one's blurry. It's mm-hmm. not that you become irrelevant. The focus just changes. There you go. That's good. Yeah, that is good. Just depth of field. Visual. Is that what it's called? Depth of field. Ah, yeah, Teamwork right it? there. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I even know that. That got pulled from somewhere in the Sweet. recesses of my pulled, brain. Pulled, push, pulled. That's a depth of field pun. <laughs> I don't. Is that even right? Yeah. Depth of field. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it was punny too. <laughs> to pull focus. Yeah. Ah, there you go. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Anybody else saying anything? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. YouTube it doesn't look like it, and yeah, I, your wife did put. Um, she really enjoys. I love what's being said. Getting oh. blessed. Mm, that's awesome. Keep so good, to guys. It. Thanks. She just put that. Even in the future, oh, add to it. Oh man. Yeah, that's right. Love you, Tana, more than any others. Ooh. You, I love you more than I love these guys. That's. And tough. I love them a lot, but I love you more. You're the most, the best. She's going to say, would you move on, Brent? <laughs> she must increase. We must decrease. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're decreasing, Brian. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Well, thank you guys for, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word and um, all that you're speaking to us today. And 
Oh, for anyone, the whole last part of this verse, for anyone that hasn't placed their faith in you yet, let them do that. Let yes. them place their faith in you today. That, yes. Lord, they could experience everlasting life. Mm. Um, I just speak that over somebody today, whenever they're joining, whenever they're watching, that they place their faith in you right now. Yeah. That they place their faith, like Chris said, not in a thing, um, but in you. Not in a structure, but in you. And mm. thank you for that today, God. Thank you for you today. Yes, God. Just give me praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, well, come join us tonight, guys. Just yeah. a quick way of announcements. Tonight at 5 o'clock, we got pizza. Woo! 14 boxes of pizza coming here. Woo! That's a lot of pizza. Boxes. We need pizza. you to come help us eat that. I think we have like a Southwest-style salad. Woo! Come on. Um, some fruit and some chips. And Ooh, man, yeah. that's going to be good. Yeah. And then we got children's ministry. What are you guys talking about tonight? We have nursery and then we have, yeah, we have children's ministry, the 5 to 11, or actually it's going to be the 4 to 11 year olds. We're looking at the science behind how God moves. It's mm. like, like this fascinating thing. Um, so actually, th today we're it's it's we're starting simple. We're starting with Jesus being the light of the world, and we're going to talk about different things of times when we need light and what happens when there isn't light, and just keep oh, going back to the man. fact like, that Jesus is the light. So that sounds awesome. So yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, it's awesome. And then Tracy will be with the youth, and they're going through identity stuff, yeah, right? Through the mission statement. Yep, they're talking about world changers. And Ooh. they're basically talking about the strongest force on the planet being love, God's love. Yes. yes. Especially since it's almost Valentine's Day. Perfect. Throw that in there with the teenagers. So I Perfect. think they're going to have a great job, a great time learning about God's love. Yeah. And she's really focusing in, too, on like them loving their selves. What does it look like for us to love ourselves? Yeah. So, that sounds good. Yeah, I think it'll be good. And supernatural freedom from the captivity of trauma. Yeah. Brand new Ooh. study starting tonight with Ruth Atkins. Ooh. I continue this son of mine study on the prodigal Come son. On, tonight's about the father's robe. Ooh. Mm. Wearing your Richard clothes that God's given you to wear. It's going to be good tonight, man. It's going to be good. Dang. Yep, it's going to be awesome. And uh, so we invite you to come out. Is there any more? No, yeah. Becoming, Becoming a welcoming family. Yep. Yes, thank you. So Nathan and Kaylin will have that class tonight for people that just want to oh, come, come and hang. On. And they're come and hang. It's not even a class, really. Mm. An alpha, yeah. Mm. I did cut you uh, off. Yeah, it's yeah. not really a course. It's. <sighs> It is just a life group of people hanging out. Mm -hmm. just Sorry. I, doing life together. <laughs> no, I'm glad you said it because I'm forgetting stuff. So Alpha Course too. that's Alpha right. Alpha Course as well, yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Come hang out with it. us. Yeah. And then we'll be with you on Sunday again. And then we'll see you any time in between that we can. Yeah. Didn't we talk about a paintball life group out back? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say that? You might have. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Sorry. That was a dream you had. <laughs> yeah. dream. That's the life group you want to be in. You want to start. Hey, now. Hey, look in the kids' hey, ministry. Now. Just kidding. Don't We're get just us kidding. muted. Hey, there. Hey, now. All right, thank you guys so much. Uh, we pray you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Yes. And keep giving them heaven. heaven.